started. Good afternoon and welcome. Today is Saturday, March 13th, 2021. We're still in COVID a bit, so I will put my mask back on after I'm talking, but we are here at the Scottish Rite Cathedral looking at the progress that has been done since the last time we visited. Uh, this is a Friends of Wheeling tour, a virtual tour, and we hope you will share it with others. So our host today is Sarl Venter, who is the master of all trades. Uh, <laughs> one way of putting it. Uh, hi, welcome, and it's a beautiful day at least, and we're excited to show you what we're working with, uh, what we're working on at the Scottish Rite Cathedral. Um, this area has always been a place for public gathering, and we are upgrading it and refreshing it for exactly that. More public to meet in, in different venues and different reasons. The room that we're sitting in, uh, we're standing in at the moment, is the library, and uh, we have an event here next Saturday. Um, we are in the final stages, then in this case it's the flooring stage of uh, preparing this room. If you look around the room, uh, first notice the ceiling, and you'll notice a new uh, paint scheme, uh, a new, we have some uh, faux painting up there, or some shading that we did to highlight some of the, the, um, the Scottish, Scottish thistle, correct Becca? And uh, the English rose pattern in the, in the arches. Um, those were, that's a new color and a new scheme to put up there. Uh, if you look at the walls, we've done a, a pattern that makes it look more like stone. Uh, this is a plaster that is cut to make it look like stone and the painting just exacerbates that fool. It fools you into thinking that it is in fact stone, but that is in fact just plaster that is cut. Um, we have removed all of the shellac from the cases, <clears throat> all of the beautiful bookcases. And by the way, Jean, there is 52 doors. I don't know if that's coincidental for one every week of the year, but there are 52 doors. Um, we removed all of the old shellac from them and we put a new stain on them. Uh, and they will have this rubbed shellac finish on them when they, when they are completed. Uh, um, we um, repaired a lot of glass in the store case, in the, in the, in the glass cases. And uh, look at the detail on the little hardware. Uh, everything we find it has just an immense amount of detail on it. Of course, all of that was hidden by years and years of dirt. You couldn't see any of that happening. A um, lot, yeah. lot of other detail. Look at this um, grill. <clears throat> out a little bit more. Um, and even little details like uh, the push plate to these massive doors, everything was made with detail. And a little bit of effort and a little bit of painting brings all of that back out again. And nothing like quality brass hardware to, to work mm -hmm. with. Um, <clears throat> and of course, I'll remind everyone that the contractor on this building was Ralph Kitchen, the same contractor who go. built the Capitol Theater uh, mm -hmm. and multiple other buildings, including the um, the Catholic Cathedral, right close to Very us. Very well built. Uh, the floor that we're working on currently um, is a white oak floor, um, and we believe it's original. I don't think it was ever been refinished. It was in dire need of a refinishing, and we are in the midst of a process of doing just that. Um, we started with a, uh, a 36 grid drum sander to, um, to equal out the unevennesses and the cupping in the wood. And um, when we are finished, as we are mostly on the other side of the floor, it, uh, it gets all the way down to 120 grid, which brings us ready for stain and eventually the uh, waterborne finishes. Um, we're hoping that this room will carry many, many, many events from many different groups in the, in the future. Uh, and uh, it certainly lends itself to that. So this sander, the heavy-duty sander, is actually hooked up to its own vacuum system. Correct. So that helps to yeah. keep the dust down a bit. That helps to keep the dust down. Um, but in, by nature, it's a dusty, it's a dusty business mm -hmm. and, uh, and soon to be over, and we're glad for that. Um, and wow, all, this is all sawdust taken out of... This is part of our floor. 
right yeah, there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's part of our floor right there. Um, if um, I'd be glad to show you the progress in the dining room and yes. what our plans are for there. If we walk over there, if you don't mind me walking ahead of you, I'll show you what we have. <clears throat> Walking through the beautiful rotunda, that's very much a construction site at the moment. Everything had to go somewhere in order to make room in the library. Oh, look here. Wait, Joanne, come back here. Breaking ground. Breaking ground the for the new there. Scottish Rite Cathedral, 14th and Byram, 1906. I can't get a good, it's reflecting. We can't see it real good. Yeah. Do you want to turn it away from the windows? Yeah. Is that better? Not really, I see all of us instead of, mm -hmm. I can see the word. <laughs> but do it for the day. Try that. Maybe? No? No? Yeah, the glass. Mm -hmm. Two reflectors. Uh -huh. Too much. Yeah. yeah. But that's cool to have. Around. Okay. Okay. Well, this is the dining room. How tall are the ceilings, Sarl? We are at 18 feet, I believe. Uh, it might be 16, somewhere between 16 and 18 feet. So it's wow. pretty tall. Mm -hmm. um, our plans here are to make a new doorway opening uh, in this location, which will give us easier access to the, to the side door and mm -hmm. from that section and uh, make it much more of a public access rather than a, a dog leg around the building. What, what, what do you have to dig through to get a hole there, a door? Well, it's a, it's a, a layer of concrete, uh, concrete construction. Uh, so it'll be aggressive, um, very more dust. <laughs> uh, and of course, you will have a, a new lintel to carry the weight above the, above the doorway. And that'll have to be put in and to, to, to carry the weight. But um, here, uh, if you remember from last time, we have a very colorful floor and we have taken on the ceiling we've taken off the cork tiles that we had on the ceiling and we're in the process of plastering that smooth so that we have a new smooth ceiling and we're working on a Rebecca's working on a color scheme and a decorative um, scheme here that will make use of the, the, the glass and the, the colors on the floor and the traditional colors that were used in the room, which pretty much came from the glass and the floor, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, and to make a new decorative scheme for this room that will make it pop from itself. Yeah. The blue uh, just doesn't seem to do it. It doesn't seem to, to fit into the traditional colors, at least. Becca, and I think the, um, the colors were basically the golds and the greens in the, in the window in the glass. And you can see some of the same colors um, in, the, uh, in the floor as well. Um, the, uh, the lights, are they in that room that's been restored for here? Let's see if we, can, uh, if we can find them. Be careful as you walk through here. Oh, there you go. So this is a billiard room, which is for the moment a glass uh, or a, a light restoration workshop. So this is one of the, the lights from the, was it the blue room or the red room? The blue lodge. The blue lodge uh, upstairs. And that's in the process of being disassembled and uh, refinished. And then it'll be, um, the electric, electric components will be renewed and refreshed and then it'll be put back together again. And uh, So then this piece, you have multiples of those? Correct. Okay, and is this glass? It yes, is. yes How it is. How they bend the glass like that? Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then these underneath the, here? Those are glass as well, correct. And you have yes. multiples of those you're working on. Correct. Wow. Yeah. So this is a larger version of what, yeah. of what these are. Because this was this one single, chandelier in the center and the rest the other so, were, were around it so. so you can see here some of the components that um, that's been polished off to the original brass 
and that now gets a, a clear coat to, to keep it from tarnishing again, or at least as quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you can see this ring, there's all the, the rest of them over there that's all been polished up <coughs> and cleaned up. So there's some of the pieces that have uh, broken glass, <coughs> so um, they'll be sent away and we'll have a company make us some new ones that match those uh, to have them all put back together again. And you can see there is some soldering to do on, on some of the, the tin pieces to, to bring back that back together again. Um, but that is in progress and these lights will be hanging in the dining room in the future. <coughs> So a lot of excitement here. Um, one of the, we're also working on plans for the new bar uh, to be built. <coughs> <coughs> there will be a new bar that's built from side to side in this room in front of the case. Uh, the back bar is still in existence, but the original bar is not here anymore. Uh, so the new new bar will be built and I think we're bringing an old uh, Refrigerator cabinet from the old kitchen down and refinishing it and using it as part of the decor <clears throat> So that's the excitement at the moment in the dining room again. You can see very much a construction site uh, very intrusive, but uh, a, a good step forward um, I'd like to take you down into the basement if you have the energy for it and I'd like to show you what our wood shop looks like now. We're much, much further on our wood window shop and um, I'd like to entice you into the Demolay room where we're working on some um, plans for terrazzo and uh, we've got a demonstration happening for, for decorative plaster. I'd like to show you all of that. Gina, I can't wait to refinish these doors. Have you noticed how thick they are? That door is about three inches thick. Wow. You're beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That's just an incredible door. And do I remember that there's a chandelier that will go up yes. there? Yes. Both outside as well as inside. Uh -huh. um, but as part of the the refinishing shop that will be <laughs> yes, getting them ready. <clears throat> okay, this is the um, where the Demolay group met before and we'll come back to this in a few moments. I'd like to show you the wood workshop first and then I'll show you what our plans are for this area. <clears throat> Uh, I do not know, and now that Becca is not here, of course, um, some of the seating, and I'm not sure if this is the ones we're looking at or not, uh, came from here, and they originally, here she is, she can tell us. Becca, tell us which of these chairs came from which theater? Oh, yes. So <laughs> the blue backs and the red sides over here, um, with the gold seats. They all came out of both sides of this room. Um, that was, this room was actually originally a bowling alley. I'm sure Sarl mentioned that. Not as yet. Um, whenever the building was built, it was built as a six lane bowling alley. Um, but it was found to be needed instead for a group called Demole, which they, the Demole and the Rainbow Girls were kind of like a youth group for mm -hmm. Scottish Rite. Um, and they had met in a building that is where our parking lot is located right now. They tore that down in the 1950s because they wanted to put in a parking lot maybe a little bit earlier than the 1950s. We haven't found an exact date. Um, so they needed to find a place for the Demole and the Rainbow Girls to meet. And so they decided to convert the bowling alley into that new meeting space. Well, also at about that same time, um, the Vellis State Theater on Market Street was being converted into another use. So they were, they were, I guess, dismantling the old theater, which is now what the Chase Building is. That used to be the old state theater. 
And so the Scottish Rite purchased the seats from the State Theatre and installed them here in the Demolay room. So there were probably about 100 seats around the room um, to turn this into a meeting space. So it's neat that the State Theatre will be no more. Yeah. You know, it will be yeah. torn down, but the seats are still around. So. Well, we'll revisit this. Let's walk through to the, um, to the wood shop and uh, <clears throat> we'll come back to this area. So this is our wood workshop and it's now pretty much better put together than the last time you saw it. Uh, there's still work to be done, but uh, this is pur purposely built for window restoration. Uh, window restoration, as we talked about before, is a, there's a die need for it. Uh, and um, between this building and the monastery and the apartment building, uh, Roxby by itself have so many windows to do that uh, we need to get a system going whereby we can do our own windows very efficiently. We hope in the future somewhere to be available for work from outside. But for the moment, this is purposely for our own windows to start off with. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and do you have workers yet? We have nobody trained as yet dedicated for this. Mm -hmm. uh, we will soon be looking for people that are interested in being trained and working for window restoration people, specialists. Um, I'm thinking probably within the month. Uh, uh, interested people should probably get a hold of us, um, but the easiest piece of person to get hold of would be Becca. That's a good question. Um, I guess go to the Roxby Development website. Yeah, Roxby Development find website, a, yeah, find a way to and uh, there would be a contact number on there, and that would be the best number mm -hmm. to for if people are interested in inquiring about that position. And that's R O X B Y. <laughs> Correct. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Right in the back, we have an enclosure. Uh, oh, that's interesting to look at. Let me show you that anyway. Um, <clears throat> the old windows contain lead, and as such, there has to be a safe way to, to remove the lead uh, from the, the sash uh, so that it does not contaminate the workshop and does not intoxicate the people that, uh, that's working with it. Um, <clears throat> so this room here was purposely built as a negative air pressure room. So once the, the windows has gone through a steam table to release the, the paint from the, uh, from the sash, it'll go in here uh, and people will be protected as they work inside of their wear protection and there will be negative air pressure in there with downdraft tables to re take it out of there. Once the sash comes out of there, it's basically now just a piece of wood. And uh, then it'll go through the rest of the shop to be uh, repaired, uh, sometimes partial replaced, and other times epoxied, uh, and re-glued, etc., etc. <clears throat> and then they'll make their way to the Dimolay room where there'll be a lot of tables set up, and they'll go through the painting and meeting up with the glass again in that shop. And then they go back to site. <clears throat> and um, So how long would one window take to go through <clears throat> this process? If you that, had one, one window start to finish. Okay. Um, the actual working time for a window uh, or a, a set of sash, you're probably looking at um, around about 20, 24. Um, the ones you're mechanized and working through uh, a lot of them. Correct. Hours. Mm -hmm. So once you're looking at a, um, a lot of sash working in a, in, a, in a very concentrated effort, and of course it really depends on what shape they're in. <clears throat> um, so you get an assembly line working which makes it more efficient. Correct, so. correct. Um, you know, so if, a, uh, if you have a continuous line and the, the same people doing the same thing, then it, it makes it a, a lot easier uh, mm -hmm. to do that. And it really depends how bad the sash is to start off with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have, um, if, I, if I go back to Ooh, um, you know, some of the places we've, we've redone frames, for instance, you've had to, had no choice but to rebuild a new frame completely. And some places we've rebuilt new sash. Uh, other places you have one piece to repair, uh, one piece to replace. Others you have just some epoxy repairs. It really can kind of depend on what you're, what you're working with to start yeah. off with. Yeah. And it could be a whole gamut. In this particular building, the sash is so incredibly large uh, that it brings you a couple of other complications. You know, now you have a reinforcement that's put into the windows in, in steel, 
and uh, this, the glass cannot just be replaced, but now you have to put a laminate to the glass in order to keep it from falling into shards should it break at a very high altitude level above the street. Mm. So it makes it a little bit more complicated. Some of these regulations are new, but because you're working on them now, you have to prevail to the new standards. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but this is basically the workshop, and as you can see, we are almost occupiable now. We've got our vacuum system, so we have a central vacuum. Um, pretty nifty. I like it. Um, uh, Sorrel, as you're passing by, tell us oh, about yes. this. <laughs> this. Um, so this is the original distribution box and the and the uh, the fuse boxes. Uh, it's very much live and very much exi exciting. And we left it just as it is. I'm not even I've not even been allowed to remove the cobwebs. <laughs> it's the history I've been told. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, we didn't want a piece of people to bump into it, which is why we put the old set of doors in front uh, to allow you to see it, but not not to touch it. Um, the, um, they're, they're currently working on bringing several new lines of um, new electric service into the building, which will all go through new electric distribution boxes, um, but the old one will still be in use and it'll still be, it'll still be just as it is. Hmm. But, um, then, uh, okay, um, yeah, this is typical wood shop. Uh, most of the things you'll be recognize, recognizable to most woodworkers. Uh, in this little air shaft, we have a... a nice dust extraction system that uh, keeps the shop relatively dust free. Uh, every machine that we operate has been connected to that so that it keeps it a little dust free. So this, for instance? Correct. So this is the thickness mm -hmm. planer, uh, one of the biggest culprits as far as making dust and, and um, sawdust. And now it would be through a gate that you can open and dedicate for that purpose um, will allow the sawdust from this crew to go directly into the bags without lying all over the floor first. Mm -hmm. you know? and, um, some of the and then you've got options like this. If you are sweeping the floor, you could, um, you could open this valve, which allows you to sweep it directly into the vacuum system rather than pick it up in a dustpan, you know, mm -hmm. and getting very fancy. Mm -hmm. I like that. But, um, but let's get to the demo later. That's where the excitement is. Let me show you what we're doing over there. Sorrel, what are these? Um gold colored things here so they're down here they belong to the um, the lights we just looked at but uh, they're down here because they went through the wire wheel to be uh, to be polished up uh, that's why they're down here Okay, watch your step down here. We took the step out. There's no step in existence anymore. <clears throat> but if you now look back on the floor, you'll notice if you look from here to here, there's a remnant of a bowling alley, just the beginning piece of it. Um, there's actually some sections in storage that we saved because we we're going to make tables out of them. Of the and you can tell that because the boards are more narrow. So you've got narrow boards that are standing on end. And normally these would be maple. And um, that gives you a very sound firm board to roll that ball on without it bouncing too much mm -hmm. and, and take a lot of punishment. So there were six lanes in this before. It started. You can see it started right here and ran all the way to the back where the stage is now. <coughs> Interesting is when they took these out, they didn't throw the wood away. They actually used this to build platforms on the side for seating. Mm -hmm. So both sections had platforms on the side for seating. 
So the plan in the future is to take this section out as well and use this whole floor as a casting studio and as a, a work area that is specifically used for video photography of specialists in the preservation field coming in and showing their, their trades. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make, you know, today if anybody has a problem with a car, they go to YouTube to go and figure out what to do about it. And um, we find that there's not enough avail information available on YouTube for uh, restoration and for the specifically for the more specific trades in restoration. Mm -hmm. And it would be wonderful if you could go there and find the same answers or at least get us part of the way to a solution. Mm -hmm. um, with that in mind, we will put the old fashioned terrazzo back on this floor. Uh, if you're familiar with terrazzo, I've got a little sample here. <clears throat> Do you recognize this, Jean? Mm, beautiful. So this is made, we made these from these marble chips, the glass chips, white cement, and a little bit of pigment that gave us the color. Does the Scottish Rite still use this building? That answer is yes. some, yes. yes, they are, some. They are still using the Not building. Not all of it. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the method here uh, we'll be using to make a whole new floor in this area. And of course that allows you with the metal on the sides, allows you to do shapes and patterns and different colors in different areas. Just as uh, most people today see these in airport floors, mm -hmm. but um, as historians you'll be very familiar with them in, in many public buildings. I mean, they were, they were very common. And the reason to do this is as a further demonstration of the craft? Partly, but it's also a very practical, hard-working floor and a hard-wearing floor, which in our case, for the purposes we're using it for, um, especially in, for plaster casting, is an easy cleanup afterwards, and it's a very hard, durable surface that you can, uh, that you can keep on, on using. So now, now the these, dark are, chips, these are bumpy, but... Correct. When you but first put them not. on, when you first put them on, uh, you end up with a, a a gnarly, sticky thing. And what you're doing is that you're creating. Uh, <clears throat> what you're wanting to do is create a flat facets that will reflect the light and be smooth. Um, the way you do that is by grinding this material that's held in the strong matrix of the of the white cement first, um, that holds it in place so that one facet can be polished. Uh, as that rolls out and it breaks out and it leaves cavities, you fill it again uh, with a thinner mixture and you allow that to set and then you hone that again with a finer grade and you fill it again and hone it again and you keep on getting finer and finer until you get more and more percentage of the material to, to shine and to have a facet mm -hmm. and that ends up with this. By the way, there's uh, several <clears throat> processes in the restoration world uh, that uses this. One of it is a product called Scagiola. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at this bowl, Gene, <clears throat> what do you think this is? I don't know, it looks like a bowling ball almost. <laughs> We're thinking bowling. I agree. I don't know. What do you think of the material? Um, glass? Stone? This is Plastic? made on, with plaster of Paris, mineral pigment, and rabbit skin glue. And Becca made it. Oh, that looks good. So it's this beautiful. is the only this is the only product. And this is a 15th century product called Scagiola. So it was made first uh, to look like marble, and they did it because dimensional marble, like a round column in an old-fashioned church or a cathedral, was incredibly expensive to make mm -hmm. with hand labor. So they would do it the marble up to um, let's say an eight foot height. Oh, there you go. That's Cajola. Yeah. Oh, and it does look just like marble. Correct. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so that would be. Wow. So they would do this. They would do this up to eight feet in real marble. But then above that, they would use Cajola because it was a lot simpler and a lot quicker to make and a lot less expensive to make. Uh -huh. So this is a product that's uh, that's cast, but it's the same principle. You use different colors of pigment 
in plaster of Paris, um, and you tend to go, there's many different kinds of plaster of Paris, and don't get me started, we can talk about mm -hmm. ages for plaster of Paris, but plaster of Paris is, uh, was, meant, was, was called that because it is a gypsum that was mined in the area around Paris <coughs> that forms plaster. Uh, <coughs> plaster of Paris is the, the gypsum mineral that's then heated um, and ground down, and when recombined with water, um, which is when missing in the heating process, uh, it, forms, um, it forms back to the rock that it started off with. And now you have uh, Plaster of Paris. So <clears throat> Plaster of Paris was then mixed with these different mineral pigment colors and um, then shaped and then it was honed and filled and honed and filled and honed and filled until you get to this glassy final finish. And because it's hard, uh, it will hold the polish. And um, uh, this is also something that we're very excited to, to teach. It is one of the lost, lost trades. There are only a couple of companies in the, in the country that still, still do this. Mm -hmm. Our last project with this, uh, doing this restoration was at the BNO Railroad Station in Grafton. Uh, we did the restoration for the Skagiola. Um, <clears throat> Can you spell that, Skagiola? S-C-A-G. L I O L A. Skagliola. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't, uh, typical, they, they choose what they want to pronounce or not. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but um, so, in a real sense, this, this, and this has a lot of the similar technique. In each case, you're grabbing material and you're faceting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need it to get hard enough to, to hold a facet. By the way, the rabbit skin glue in the mixture is simply to keep. Um, these different mixtures of plaster of Paris from setting up too quick. Normally, your darker pigments want to set up quicker than the light pigments. Mm. And if they do, they rob the water or the moisture from the lighter pigments, not allowing the lighter pigments to dry. Uh, the, the plaster of or the rabbit skin glue is a retarder, which allows everything to slow down, and that allows everything to set up at the same time. Now, so, rabbit skin glue. Rabbit skin glue. Is it made out of rabbit skin? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, same as wood glue is made from. Wood. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> well, no. It's made to. It's made from from uh, from from animals. You know, from oh. uh, from animal hides and oh. and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, they, they used to collect the old horses to make the glue, you know, <laughs> it's still components like that. Now, if someone was wanting to learn this trade, would they start with a flat floor and then move up to, I mean, would this be the ultimate? It's really not associated. This is much more doable. Uh, and I know that as we do this whole floor, uh, we will not only share that, not, that information with you and you'll definitely be part of that process, but... Um, uh, it will be video photograph uh, so that we will mm -hmm. be able to share it with the, mm -hmm. with the public as well through a dedicated channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, then ultimately, would you produce this commercially here? No, but we will teach people how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the, so this product is still made, but mostly in epoxy, because mm -hmm. if you use an epoxy base, uh, it's much more predictable the bond that you get, and you get a much more str a stronger predictable bond. As soon as you get to the original material, which in this case is white cement, um, then you have to have a little bit more knowledge as to how the material cures and how much moisture, not too much moisture, uh, how long uh, it, it becomes a, a bit more tricky. Um, but um, it's still very relevant. For instance, when we do this floor, uh, we start off by spreading sand all over this existing concrete the sand will act as a, a barrier between the old concrete and the new concrete. Then on the sand, we will pour two inches of new concrete. Uh, the new concrete will now be separated from the old concrete so that the old cracks and the movement in the building will not transparent through to the new slab. Uh, on top of the new slab then, we will add these metal pieces in whatever shape we want. Mm -hmm. and we'll put different colors of the mixture into the different components of it. And that then gets ground down and it gets honed down and filled in the various layers. But this is really the only material that will work on this floor because this material will allow moisture to go through it, uh, whereas epoxy will not. Uh, so anytime that you have any area where moisture is possible, 
uh, you really want to go with the traditional material or not there. More than anything else, um, you want to be able to do patchwork and, and restoration in this material. And in that case, you definitely don't want to go to the epoxy. You want to use the mat original material. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But let me show you another example of what we want to show. If you've been to the, um, <clears throat> the um, Becker, the, uh, what's the house I'm looking for? <clears throat> Fine Arts Center. Yes. Oh, Stifle Fine Arts Centre. Yes. If, if you've been looking at the ceiling in the Stifle Fine Arts Centre, it mm -hmm. kind of looks like that, right? Mm -hmm. Looks incredibly complicated, doesn't it? And you would think that it's a magic to make it. Well, this, this is how it's done. And I, next time you come to visit us, we will show you how to actually to cast this. But you start off with a plan, and you can see you've got one basic pattern mm -hmm. that in intersects. So the, the pattern gets laid out on the floor, and then you decide <clears throat> what your angle is, what your uh, radius is for the, for the little knife that you make that has that pattern. And I never cleaned it after the last, after the last one, but you can see this gives us that shape. And now by putting this in, in place, we end up with the next time you come to visit we'll show you how to put plaster and paris in front of this knife mm -hmm. and draw and create one of these mm -hmm. and by cutting these and making them work together you end up filling in the pattern and you stitch these back on the ceiling and voila you have a very complicated looking ceiling mm -hmm. really pretty simple and even these little connections which seems like a pain in the butt to to put together on site we have this nifty little invention uh, if you look at this hmm. <clears throat> so we drew the knife through here with these blocks in place with some vaseline to keep it from sticking on it and once you've drawn the whole piece it comes apart and now the one fits on top of the other. Hmm. And that gives, you, uh, that gives you the intersection. So now it becomes just a Lego piece and putting it back together again. Mm -hmm. um, the same way that you draw little sections like this also allows you to draw any kind of a corner molding or anything like that, either on the table or actually in place on the, on the ceiling. This is also something that we're very excited about sharing on video and, and teaching people how to do. It mm -hmm. doesn't need to be a, a mystery. And uh, in a nutshell, that is where we are at the Scottish Rite at the moment. Work continues on a daily basis. We have, um, all in all, probably, uh, what, at least a half a dozen or so people working on a daily basis in here, making things happen. And um, it'll continue for quite a while and until we have much more to show in our next visit. Great. But, uh, Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. And um, we will... Um, of course, if you're watching this now, you know that it's on uh, Facebook, but we will also post this um, on YouTube, and we will put a link to it in the next Friends of Wheeling newsletter. So thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to our next tour.